What's up everybody, Ben here. Today I'm gonna to be removing the skid plates off of this uh, YXZ so I can access the undercarriage and do some service. So now working safely underneath this bin pack four post lift, I have awesome access to the underbelly and removing the skid plates, my YXZ here. This is the main reason that I got this four post lift for this station um, is so oil changes and skid plates are simple and easy and safe. Um, this is basically just a bunch of 10 millimeter bolts. The bolts are different for different parts and I'll point those out to you now. And I use, I use a gun, a little, a little lightweight impact and uh, I use it for removal of these. So the back two have this little space on them. This, this bolt has a little, uh, I don't know, a little spacer at the bottom that you see there. And that's because it goes through the plastic and then bottoms out up against the, the metal of the frame up there. So this is a different bolt than the others. So these bolts are bigger and it's because it goes through this piece of plastic and through another piece of plastic before it hits that cross member on the frame. So the the spacer is bigger, as you can see there. Um, so it's a larger flange on the head of the bolt, plus the spacer is bigger. So these are the same way in the front where the front skid plate up here, it's right there and right there. Same type of deal where the front skid plate and the belly skid plate, the center one, overlap each other, so it requires this bigger bolt. Well, I only dropped one, I'll have to go find it. Um, so this, all those ones I just took out were all the silver fasteners with the spacer, either the big ones or the little ones, like I just showed you. Um, there's only four of the big ones and that's where the two pieces of plastic overlap, like I just described. So now the rest of the bolts, these are all 10 millimeter heads, but the rest of the bolts are like this and this is a black 10 millimeter um, with, a, with a loose washer on it. So these are used anywhere it's plastic to plastic fastening. And these are not torqued very much. They're not holding any kind of weight or anything. It's just a piece of plastic with a little clip that threads on. Like so, so four of these, like I said, um, plastic to plastic. So now that belly skid is all loose. I usually grab the center of it and pull it down. It kind of has to taco, like it has to fold a little bit in order for it to come loose. Because there are um, like flanges on each side that kind of overlap with all the surrounding skid plates. Haha, <laughs> I missed one. Here we
Okay, so this is a good time to do some inspection. Um, this is what I'm exposing right now is the engine oil filter. Uh, also, while I'm down here, I will access the transmission oil drain bolt and there's a filter screen there. And the front differential has a drain bolt there. And the rear differential has a drain bolt um, there. So. Okay, everybody, I'm done with my services. I am now going to reinstall the skid plates here. Um, basically, a reverse order of what uh, you saw me do um, when I took them off. There's a couple tricks I'll show you, uh, particularly where they overlap. So I will review the bolts here. This is the bolt used for one skid plate to chassis, usually to those cross members. This is the bolt used whenever you're going through two skid plates to the chassis. And this is the bolt you're using when you go plastic to plastic. So normally when two pieces of skid plate overlap and one of them has like a little metal clip on it. So I will tell you which bolts go in where as I'm putting them in. Uh, you start with installing the center belly skid first. And something I like to do is undo these side skids. You don't really have to do this when you take the skids off, but they overlap a little bit. Here on the, on the outside edge, you'll see right here, they overlap. These have to go under those side pieces. So I, I loosen these quite a bit, um, or I take those bolts out so I can loosen them and pull them down. So same thing as when we took it off, I just kind of try to do my best to taco it so that I can slip in the sides. Or I'll maybe do one side before the other. All right, so I left it hanging here on purpose. I wanted to show you the way these front pieces work. Okay, so from the front, this is the, what you'll see. These overlaps, um, essentially the belly skid goes on top of all of these. Um, and the idea is that if this is the front of the car, so, so if your debris is moving this way, it doesn't ever have a lip to catch. Let me see if I can. And then this piece is like a little key that interlocks. There you go. That's what one side looks like. I'll now do the other side and uh, put a couple of bolts in.
So I just kind of started those two over there just so that that side doesn't fall out while I'm working on this side. All right, so, okay, so I basically kind of finger tightened those black screws that go plastic to plastic. And now I'm going to start with the small silver screws that go plastic to chassis. And I'm not gonna do them all. And I'm not going to tighten them all the way. Okay, so the belly skid is just kind of, um, it doesn't have all the bolts in and it doesn't have any of them tightened. They're all just kind of in there, finger tight or so. Um, I'm gonna do the rear skid plate the same way. The rear skid plate has two of these small silver bolts and two of the big silver bolts. So the small silver bolts both go right here, the rear of the chassis, kind of at the the bottom of the bumper you can see those from outside the car when it's on the ground and then two of the big silver bolts that go here and here where it overlaps with the belly skin the only thing you really need to pay attention to is that this tab goes here it goes under that so they kind of interlock also i'll mention this car has a weller racing rear frame brace right here that adds a little bit extra of a bump there and that's something that um, I know there's other manufacturers that make rear skid or rear rear frame braces as well. So that might interfere a little bit, but just be mindful that that might pull it a little bit. So what I do is I key it and then I, I basically get my, my rear two kind of in there and I kind of have to pull on it a little bit to make it to make it stretch that far. Okay, that's the rear skid plate. All right, so the front skid plate is kind of a funny shape because you'll notice the contours are different. The footwell for the driver's side is different shape because there's pedals and things over here than there are over here. Um, so uh, there's also some additional screws that kind of overlap there. You just gotta make sure it's all keyed right. So I'll start with these these here oh you know what i messed that up i put in two that don't need to be there
My bad. Um, so I'll start down here and just kind of overlap it all just right. Okay, so this side, so the overlaps, um, the, the, just make sure it's like you see here where essentially the front skid plate is what would normally catch debris if you're riding over rocks or sand or something so that this lip is not hanging down. So that, you know, there's got those tabs are all kind of interlocked in there. None of it's tightened, but you kind of see the way that they, they interlock with each other. And this piece is underneath this piece. And same thing on this side. So there's some funny overlaps, but you, you'll be able to figure it out. It's not that hard. And then I start with these two that are right um, in, in the middle of the bumper up here. Um, I kind of start with those because they're kind of the, in my opinion, the ones that need to be aligned and then you can kind of stretch it back is how I feel about it. So these two are these small silver screw. And again, I'm not tightening anything yet. Something else I'll mention, it is not uncommon to have missing skid plate bolts from the factory. Uh, the truth is they probably left the factory with the skid plate bolts there, but a lot of times they fall out because either they weren't torqued or they weren't tight or whatever the case may be. I don't know if the dealers install skid plates or not. I don't think they do, but they might. And if that's the case, it might just be hasty dealer assembly or careless dealer assembly, whatever. But I, I know I've had missing skid plate bolts on many. So those were the small silver bolts. Those, those two here and these two here are the only small silver bolts. And then I have the big silver bolts right here that overlap the belly skid for the, the center, center skid. Okay, and then this is the last couple of bolts right here that are plastic to plastic. And I will now just go up and down. I don't think I have all the belly skid bolts in, so I'll go up and down, making sure that I have all the bolts in. And uh, yeah, see like, Right there in the middle. I didn't get that one in yet. So I'll just go up and down and make sure I got them all in. Yeah, I didn't get those two yet. And then I will torque them all down. So the book says seven Newton meters, which is not very much, but from, so I've done a little bit of testing on my little Milwaukee uh, impact here. If I hit it like three times, Like I'll stick a torque wrench on that and before, and it's somewhere around seven or eight uh, Newton meters. So I'm just telling you that it's not that critical, um, but I use a small impact, impact and I, um, I have, I've kind of tested that with a torque wrench to make sure I'm not just beating the heck out of them. So uh, I know some people have recommended putting blue Loctite on them. 
uh, that's probably not a bad idea if you are continuously losing if you're continuously losing uh, skid plate bolts but um, I don't lose a lot of them. I ride sand though and I'm pretty smooth generally um, some of you guys that are rock bouncing it might be a big deal for y'all I assume rock guys have uh, aftermarket skid plates so anyways that's really it I will uh, just run through real quick and give all these a little pat pat with my impact like you just saw and um, done with that uh, what else I think that's it thanks for watching like and subscribe if you want to see more uh, videos about uh, Yamaha Black Z's Bye.